Let's go and welcome back everybody to Doki Doki Fallen Angel. Last episode, we celebrated the school festival and would you believe it? It actually went well. We met a new character by the name of Amy. She was an absolute sweetheart. Uh, Natsuki did not take too kindly to her, but that's all right. We met some school bullies and we most definitely taught them a lesson to never mess with Yuri again. That's what it do be. And uh, now we're back at home, waking up to a bright, shiny new morning, ready to tackle another school day. So without further ado, let's jump into it. A light glow shines onto my eyes, waking me up. I tighten my eyes before finally opening them. I extend my arm to grab my phone and bring it to my face. Saturday, 9.42 a.m. Never mind, it is totally not a school day. Ugh. Look out the window. Why are we sighing, bro? It's the weekend. Let's go hang out with Yuri, dude. A day with Yuri can never go wrong. Okay, d actually, don't quote me on that, because for all I know, fate is going to decide that, I don't know, I get hit by a truck or something and I'm in the hospital. Window? Window to your heart? Reference? Flashback? Why? D Literally, whenever I play mods, all I think of is window to your heart now. I know it's the most recent mod I played, sort of, but like, I don't know. It somehow has some crazy staying power in my brain, I guess. <laughs> there appears to be some heavy cloud formations growing. Don't worry, I did not spoil you for window to your heart, okay? No, nobody gets hit by a car, I promise. Perhaps a storm is coming. I climb out of bed and start my day. I flop down on the living room couch. For a while, I just sit there for the serenity of my own... Just sit there in the serenity of my own empty house. I'm always empty. Hmm? Bring my phone to my field of view. It's Yuri. Is it okay if I start heading to your house? Ooh, yo. Yeah, that's fine. My arm falls limp again and I sit lifeless on the couch. I feel so bored today. Hopefully Yuri shows up soon to save me from this void that is my living room. For the next 20 minutes, I just sit on the couch staring at the ceiling. Suddenly, I hear a bell. That must be Yuri. I heave myself off the couch and make my way to the door. I gently open the door. <laughs> Yuri appears on the other side. Hey, what's up, girl? Good afternoon, Raw. Are you ready to go? Oh, let me make sure I got my wallet real quick. I slap my ass as hard as I can. <laughs> yeah, I got everything. Let's go. Yuri and I step outside and head towards the psychiatrist's office. Hello, you two. Welcome back. He speaks in his usual upbeat tone. Not exactly the kind of voice you'd imagine a psychiatrist to have. Well, you know, I totally gave him the most, I don't know, generic psychiatrist voice ever, maybe. I don't know, mine is like, it's like calming, but like kind of upbeat, but also like maybe a little bit of suspect. You know, we're still sussing this man out. Who knows if he has the, you know, the most purest intent, uh intentions to uh to save yuri i mean you would think so but who knows maybe this could turn into a freaking horror mod i don't know what the genres are okay i'm not saying trust your psychiatrist if you go to one okay i'm just we're playing a video game so usually in video games you might run into a wackadoodle psychiatrist that's just how it be though to move the plot forward to make the plot thicken anyway I shake his hand like always he then offers his hand to Yuri, and they shake as well. Well, shall we get started, then? He gently opens his door to his office and gestures us to step inside. We walk over to the couch and take our seats. Naturally, Dr. Langton sits in the chair opposite to us. So, as you know, this is simply a checkup. I just want to make sure the medication is working. Everything is fine, etc. Okay. Now that, now that I'm thinking about it, it kind of sounds like Yuri's dad, dude. Is it Yuri's dad? Yuri fidgets in her seat. That's odd. For all this time, I figured she'd be used to Dr. Langton by now. It's the third meeting. I, I you know, I've, I've never been to therapy personally. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I think every human being in the world should have therapy because everyone's going through their own issues and troubles throughout life, okay? It's, it's very helpful to, I think, you know, have someone to help you out along the way especially you know someone like a like a therapist you know it's kind of different from a friend but um 
What was I talking about? Oh yeah, like, you know, from what I've heard, it's like, you know, you might get absolutely nowhere in therapy for the first maybe, you know, week of sessions, aka, you know, like the first like five meetings. Like nothing may get done. And it, it all depends. And then Gary, she's a very guarded individual. They might not make progress for, you know, weeks and weeks of visits. Who knows? I don't know. Just take a chill pill, Rar. Everything will be okay. We'll figure it out. I guess I should start with the most blatant question. Have you been self-harming at all, Yuri? Yuri shakes her head. No. That is good. He scribbles in his notebook. And I believe school has started back up again. Is that correct? Yuri nods. Yes. And how was the first week back? It, it was fine. He continues to stare at Yuri. Just... Fine? Y y yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something feels off here. Even with the exception of Yuri being introverted, her one-word replies seem unnatural. It's like she's forcing the words out. Dr. Langton has leaned over his knees, examining Yuri. After a short while, he leans back into his chair. He looks down at his notes, readjusts his glasses, and looks back up at Yuri. Are the kids at school treating you okay, Yuri? What do you mean? I'm just asking how the students behave. Are they nice? Cheerful? Are you making friends? That kind of stuff. They're... they're okay. Dr. Langton stares at Yuri for a few more seconds before they finally... before finally writing into his notepad. Is Yuri not gonna bring up that group of boys? I don't know, maybe it's not important. Maybe it is. Yuri's acting weird. Even by Yuri's standards. Is it really my place to say anything? Just a bystander in their meeting after all? I feel it's the doctor's right to know. I have to speak up. I think it's kind of insane that we don't have a choice, but let's do it. Well, Yuri doesn't resent me for bringing this up. Well, there was this one interaction yesterday. Oh? He leans on the edge of his seat. Yuri jerks her gaze onto me. There's fear on her face. Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. Too late to go back on it now. Since there's no other options, I've already opened the can of worms. It wasn't anything, really. Just a group of immature boys shouting obscenities. Dr. Langton softly bites down on the tip of his pen. For a short period of time, he finally says something. And how did that make you feel, Yuri? <laughs> I catch a glimpse of her hands trembling. He presses them onto her lap and to cover it up. You can be honest with me. I won't judge or think any less of you. I, I was forced, angry, embarrassed, sad. There were so many emotions at once. It was like a point nine earthquake came and shook every fabric of my soul. And then several equally as powerful aftershocks hit me right after. Oh, from me, because I confronted them. Oh my god. <laughs> Yuri takes a moment to collect their thoughts. The doctor remains silent as well. But then Ra acted. He got us out of that horrendous situation. And I'm very thankful for that. Oh. I mean, okay. I hope that's not a lie. I mean, it's not a lie, but like, I hope that's how she feels. She clenches her hand and gives me a soft smile. Well, Dr. Lincoln scans over his notes. That is good to hear. I understand school can be a challenge, and I know kids can often be brutal at times, but I think as long as you two have each other, there's nothing that will hold you back. He gives us both an almost cartoon-like smile. Anyway, moving on. How's your prescription holding up? If I recall correctly, you should be requiring a new order soon, correct? He flips through some papers on his desk to reassure himself. Uh, correct. 
Well, the pharmacy has already has the files, so you can go back on your own time. Moving his arm up in a large motion, now so casually checks his watch. Well, he clasps his hands together. I think that is all for today. Any questions? Gary and I exchange glances. No, I think we're good. Wonderful. Feel free to contact me on when you want to schedule your next appointment. Daddy begins to shuffle us out of his office. Oh. We arrive at Yuri's house. And that went fairly well, I'd say. What do you think, Yuri? Yuri, you okay? He's been acting weird recently. Weirder than usual, in any case. I'm fine. Fine. Whenever a girl usually says things like that, it's usually the complete opposite of fine. I subconsciously begin to take steps towards her. Here he begins to back away like an animal caught in a cage. However, she only backs away so far, I can find myself inches away from her. Here he's only a little, sh a little shorter than me, allowing us to maintain eye contact fairly easily. And with that, she refuses to look at me in the eyes. She begins to slowly open her mouth. I... I... Breathe, Yuri. Take a moment. Collect your thoughts. <sighs> Something she's done time and time again. Finally, she speaks up. Uh, I'm going to drop out of school. Uh, what? Drop out? She can't actually be serious. Okay, time out. Rewind. You're... What? There's a tinge of annoyance in my voice. This is why I didn't tell you. I knew you'd be upset. Wait. How long have you been keeping this from me? A while now. I felt disappointed also. A bit furious. The thought of Yuri hiding such a big decision from me hurts. Why are you just now telling me? I don't want you to worry. Yuri, all I do is worry about you. A contorted expression grows on her face as if she just saw me kick a puppy. Uh, I didn't realize it was such a burden to you. Someone you always have to think about and worry about. That's not what I meant. Oh, I'd hate to burden you, Ra. I didn't say that. I guess I'm not capable of looking after myself. After all, I'm just a girl with scars on her arms. A girl with no friends. Oh, other than words on a page. I'm useless. No, Yuri, you're not. Then explain why you feel the need to spectate my life every waking moment of the day. Don't get upset at me for the secrets you've been hiding. Look, now we're getting off topic. Back to my point, you can't drop out of school. Why not? You... You just can't. It's not your decision to make. Regardless, it's still a bad decision. You just don't understand. That's the problem, you never tell me. Okay, answer me this. Why do you want to drop out? Your grades are exceptional. It has nothing to do with my grades. Is it because of the boys yesterday? I told you not to worry about them. My voice grows more irritated with each sentence. It, it's not just that. It's... What is it? I can't say. No, we're not keeping secrets anymore from each other. Tell me what's wrong. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. No. I've worked too hard to get close to her, and once again she's shutting me back out. Damn it, Yuri! My thoughts are cloudy. I don't know what to do. I'll let her shut herself in. She may never come back out. Just tell me what's bothering you. Uh, I... I can't. I feel my blood steam heating up. My bloodstream heating up. Please stop resisting my help. But please, don't do this. Do what? Help you? Listen to you? Actually take the time to find medical professionals to treat you of all your problems? Everything I do, Yuri, it's all for you. Yuri just shakes her head while trying to hold back tears. I, I didn't want this. You didn't want this? 
Of course, Yuri! How could I forget? I'm just the guy who chased you down, barged into your house, and forced his way into your life unwanted. It's not like that! Then what's it like? Uh, I... I don't know. Please stop saying that. Surely you have to know something. This is going nowhere. My hands are shaking as if I drank a liter of an energy drink. I can feel the steam rising in my ears. I keep pressing forth. This is what she did when I first found her cutting a wrist. She pushed me away as far as she could. I can't let her ruin her life. I catch a glimpse of myself in the window. My enraged reflection stares back at me. I see it disgusts me. Here I am yelling at the girl that I thought I loved. Oh. Mary's voice snaps me out of my daze. She's no longer yelling. In fact, her voice is so quiet it's barely audible. I don't want to see us like this. I... I love you. Love. I've heard that word so many times the past several months. Where did it come from Yuri's lips? My lips. My best friend's lips. I feel like it's been said so much, it's lost all meaning. If you really loved me, you tell me what's wrong. You trusted me. You would give me time. I don't know who to trust anymore. I can taste the venom dripping from my teeth. It's bitter yet satisfying to spit out my mouth. A tear glides down Yuri's face. All the memories we made. The stories we shared. The time we've passed. Yes, even hot love has a cold end. I look at her straight in the eyes. The windows are... The window to the soul, as she puts it. I suppose they're just bittersweet memories at this point. I feel like a failure. After everything I've done, you still don't trust me? Marie's retracted body only makes me feel worse. It pains me to see her like this. So why can't I stop? It's my turn for my voice to be barely audible. Why don't you like anyone? You didn't see the messages. What messages? What messages? The ones everyone saw. I think back to myself. Last week. The boy in class who stifled a laugh at a long message. The two loud girls in my class. Talking about someone in text. Some text message. What was in the messages, though? I have to know. I look back to Yuri. He looks lifeless. I have to make a choice. <sighs> Dude. I... I tell you, I tell you. This mod makes you make some tough choices. Pretty much every other DDLC mod I've played, it was pretty obvious what you're supposed to pick. I'm going to be real with you. It's like, you know, I feel like the hardest choice we made in like a DDLC mod when it came to like kind of romance slice of life was like, Taking Stuart to therapy and choosing to go with her or not when we're in love. It's like, go with her, obviously. Here it's like, man, I don't know. I, I don't know what's best for her. I mean, I think the way we've been dealing with this issue was not good. At the same time, in the current moment we're at right now. <clears throat> she just brought up the text messages, man. You know, she didn't, she didn't have to bring that up, you know what I mean? I think the fact that she said that and the fact that we're prodding a little bit is, is honestly maybe something that she wants. I, I think maybe we should press kind of this specific topic at least. Um, yeah. Yuri, you have to tell me what's in those messages. Oh, I can't. Damn it, Yuri, you're not helping me. With every one of my attempts to get closer, she still pushes away. Oh god, that hurts. Oh god. Oh. I'm actually... Oh god. 
I really think I'm actually making the wrong choices, man, and it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts to even say these words. This is bullshit. How can I help you if you don't tell me what's wrong? What could those messages pertain to be to make Yuri want to drop out? Do you regret falling in love with me, Ra? Question came out of nowhere. Still form an answer. No. I regret believing that you had fallen for me. What? Harry's taken aback by my statement. Yeah, me and her both. Eyes begin to feel like waterfalls. Tears don't fall. They crash. Go away. What? Go away, Ra. Her voice is still barely audible, but there's a force behind the statement. So. This is how you want it to be? Please. Just go. I don't say anything after that. There's nothing left to say. Stare at her for a bit longer. Take in her long purple hair, her woman like body, lavender eyes. Lavender eyes that even. that even red with tears, go pierce straight through my soul. Turn on my heel and leave her house. For once, it's not the morning sunshine that wakes me up. This time, I'm shocked awake by the sound of crashing thunder. There's a storm screaming outside. Without the sun, I have no idea whether it's morning or afternoon. Check my phone. 10.24 a.m. It's a bit late, but not too bad. I'm out of bed as the rain continues to pour. I sit down on the couch. Resting my elbows on my knees, I press my face into my palms. What did I do yesterday? Yuri for no reason. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Smack my forehead repeatedly. Got upset and allowed my emotions to get the better of me. This is all my fault. I feel like my insides are being pricked by needles. I really am a failure, huh? There has to be something that I could do, though. I need to apologize. Lightning continues to strike outside. I look outside my living room window. It shows no sign of stopping, either. The rumbling continues to shake the ground. Flashes of white fill the glass screen. I run back upstairs. Throwing open my closet door, I grab my raincoat. I'm gonna go apologize to Yuri in person. Scraping it on, I begin to prepare myself for the icy rain. In the world? Pull my phone out of my pocket. It's a random number, but I recognize the area code. Hello? Hello, may I speak to Rar, please? Speaking. And who is this? I'm calling from the Northeast Medical Hospital. Hospital? And why are you calling? You're listed as an emergency contact for Miss Yuri. Miss Yuri. Is everything okay? Yes, she's awake. My grip loosens and my phone nearly slips out of my hand. Awake? Miss Yuri's awake? My mind begins racing faster than the lightning outside. This is incredible news. So incredible, I forgot how to speak. Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I see her? Of course, that was the whole purpose of the call. Okay, I'll be over there soon. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Goodbye. I rang up and jammed my phone back into my pocket. Without another thought, I tie my shoes and dash out in the storm. I arrive at the hospital. 
Its cold hallways do nothing to warm me up from the freezing rain. We can walk towards the secretary's desk. Halfway to it, the hospital doors fly open. A brown-haired man wearing a regular shirt and jeans come barreling through. He has a worried expression. He cuts past me to the secretary desk. He points the way to the doctor. He rushes to the doctor down the hall. The doctor with a sour face points to a room. The man finally rushes into that room. I'm at a loss. All right, then. Finish my trek to the secretary's desk. May I help you? I'm looking for Siori. Begins to scroll through her computer. Your name? Rar. Perfect. Miss Siori's in room 309. Points behind me. Just take those elevators to the third floor and follow the hallway. Thanks. Practically run from the desk to the elevators as if it were a race. Third floor. Why does every hospital look the exact same? Silently damn the architect who designed this place. There's a line of doors before me. As I walk past them, I take note of the numbers. Seven through eight. Ah, 309. Lightly knock on the door. No response. Then presses on the handle. Gently open the door. Okay, come on, stop beating me, bro. Jesus. I walk into the hospital room. Somehow it's even colder than the hallway. Eyes pan through the blank walls. Hey. I spot Siori laying on the bed. Siori. Roller. Ah! I cross the room in a flash and embrace Siori. Oh my god! I was so worried! I'm so sorry, Siori. Roller. Is that really you? I could ask the same thing to you, Baka. I couldn't feel her soft skin in my hands. If I couldn't feel her soft skin in my hands, I wouldn't believe it was actually her. I stifle my sobs and collect myself. I stand over her bed. I'm so sorry, Rar. No, this is my fault. I should have done more to be there for you, Siori. I was so caught up in my own feelings, I never thought about you. I was selfish. I just smile sadly. You're silly, Rar. Huh? That's not the reaction I expected. I was the selfish one. I did the most selfish thing possible. I didn't think of anyone else in that moment. Her eyes are red with tears. Watch as they glide down her cheeks and crash onto the plain white sheets of the bed. I I'm just glad you're awake. You're actually awake. I repeat myself, just to confirm this is actually real. I'm so scared. I really can't put into words how concerned I was. I'm really sorry I made you sad. I wave my hand dismissively. Enough with the apologies. Let's just agree to both be sorry. Corners of my her mouth race. Okay. So, how is everyone? Good. I nod reassuringly. Everyone's good. Natsuki's holding down the fort for you. That's nice to hear. And you and Yuri? I think guilt flashes over me. I don't even apologize to her. We're fine. I through my teeth. Yuri's been through enough. I want to worry about my problems. I attempt to shift the topic. I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm just really glad you're awake. I was losing sleep over you. Meanwhile, I was gaining sleep. <laughs> the fact that Siori can still keep her aloof attitude, I find somewhat admirable. I know she's okay. Yet knowing she's okay does put a smile on my face. I just want things back to normal, Siori. She stares out the window. Do you know what it's like to be in a coma, Rar? Uh, no. Can't say I do. It's kind of like you're sleeping. Time passes by differently when you're asleep. When I woke up, I was worried I was 50 years in the future, and everyone would be all old and wrinkly. It was also scary. Stares at me with her sky blue eyes. There were times where I was aware of my surroundings. Aware? I could sense things, if that makes sense. It doesn't. Sometimes I could feel the nurse changing out my IV, or I could hear the doctor having a conversation. One time I heard the doctor discussing with my parents on the phone about something called the patient's right to die. Whether or not it was ethically okay to put me to sleep. 
heart drops into my stomach. Just hearing those words caused my legs to grow weak. It was like I was watching a movie about my own death. And the scariest part is that I couldn't use my legs to run away. I didn't have a voice. I couldn't use to call for help or talk to myself, keep myself company. It gets lonely. You see your fears come to life. I'm glad I was not afraid of the dark. <laughs> Gives a small giggle before returning to a serious tone, as serious as someone like Siori can sound. It's hard to escape your inner demons when they're encased in your own mind. Sorry you had to go through that, Siori. Place my hand on hers. It was an interesting experience, to say the least. Who knew you could learn so much while being asleep? I'll make sure to tell my teachers that. <laughs> we share a small smile between us. The sound gives me a nostalgic feel of our childhood. Back when Siri and I would play around the block. Climb trees, cause mischief. I refuse to believe that girl is gone. I look into her eyes and I see despair. Would it be better to go back and change what happened? Don't dwell on the past. He says as if she read my mind. Like I said, I learned something while being asleep. This experience showed me what I've become. The solution I took to stop the pain. And in it, I almost lost what's most important to me. My eyes have been opened to something newer. Something greater. What's the word for that? An epiphany? Is that the right word? Yuri would probably know. I don't know if I'll ever beat my dis my depression, but I do know it won't. I won't let it beat me. It'll be a lifelong battle. And I'm willing to stay by your side through it all. I like that. Yuri gives me a smile, and this time it's a genuine Siori smile. A smile that fills this bland white room with hope, purity, and warmth. Everyone's really going to be happy to see that you're back. I'm sure. You know, for a second I was expecting both of you and Monica to be here. Monica? Why would we be together? When I woke up, I actually spoke to her. She said that you and her would visit me. Siri, I think the anesthesia is affecting your brain. How would Monica get a hold of me? She has your number. She what? Monica has my number? I gave it to her when you joined the club. It's only obvious for a club president to have contact numbers. My mind's having a hard time keeping up with its own thoughts. The pieces of the puzzle slowly start taking shape. Rar, are you okay? You look like you've seen a ghost. Siori, where is Monica? I believe she said she's stopping by around. She looks at the clock on the wall. Oh, how convenient. She should be coming any second. Uh, I need to go to the bathroom. You mind? Not at all. I turn my heel and walk out of the room. I run down the corridor. I don't look where I'm going. Suddenly I find myself falling. Oh. My head starts to throb, the cold tiles press against my face. Ugh. I place my hands on the floor and push myself up. I collect my bearings and see who I ran into. Of course. As you always said. How convenient. Hi, Rar! You know, you really should be more careful. Even if it, if it were in a hospital, it's best not to get yourself hurt. Cut the banter, Monica! I know what you've been doing! I stick my finger to her face. This ends now! Why are you trying to fuck up my life? What do you mean, Rar? You think I'm dense? I figured out your little game. All those strange texts, they're coming from you. Well, it took you long enough to figure that out. What's wrong with you? Do you find enjoyment in ruining other people's lives? I could ask you the same thing. None of this would have happened if it weren't for her. Her? What are you talking about? You and your little girlfriend. You think you can just intrude on my life? 
We didn't intrude on anything, you dumb bitch. What's it be ruined? Your perfect life? Yes. I'm stunned by her straightforward answer. You did. Everything was perfect. My family was loving. My grades were second to none. Everyone loved me. I had friends. I had a club I was proud of. The only thing missing was someone to share it with. And then you came along, and finally I had someone to share my life with. But you didn't choose me. Monica's voice grows louder with every sentence. You didn't choose me. Why, Rar? You could have had something perfect, but instead you chose a broken girl. Shut your fucking mouth. I step face to face with Monica. You can't do anything now. I tried to warn you. I showed you you're her true side, but you were too oblivious. Why? Why couldn't have you have loved me instead? The hospital staff and even some patients are silently witnessing our quarrel. My life could have been perfect. Why didn't you choose me? Maybe because you're not as perfect as you think. Monica shocked by my words. I recognize that look in her eyes. It's the same look Siori showed when she confessed about her depression. The same one Natsuki spoke, showed when she spoke of her father. It's even the same look. Yuri had it when she showed me about her cutting. They all share the same look in their eyes. The look of fear. Fear of being lost in an unforgiving world. I don't want any of this, Monica. I just want a normal life. That's not what was given to me. Just like you said. I had dreams of a perfect life. But this world isn't perfect. You have to learn that eventually. Monica looks... heartbroken. Her words come out as a whisper. No. No, 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 no. I worked too hard for this. I worked too hard to get what I wanted. But in the end... Monica gazes down the hall to where room 309 is. I hurt the ones I loved. Love. What a stupid word. You know, <laughs> you need to accept the past, Monica. Everything you do has consequences. You have to live with them. But you can still change who you are. Why did I say that? Maybe it's the look in Monica's eyes. They all share the same look. Just like Yuri, Monica's a lost girl in a cruel world. I feel a little pity for her. He can forgive you. Shakes her head. You don't know what I've done. You'll be okay, Monica. I told everyone. Told everyone what? It's the only way to get her out of the picture. His emerald eyes begin to turn red. And once again, I find myself eye level with a crying girl. Told everyone what? I have a lot of connections with people in school. I sent out a mass message out to nearly the entire school body. Monica? What was in those messages? She uses to look at me. I told everyone about Yuri, about her cutting. For just a moment, my heart stops beating. I stand there for a while in shock. The sound of the nurses walking by, the EKGs beeping. Even the storm outside has been drowned by my own silence. I feel like I'm in a void. I stare into the abyss. It stares back. The same feeling when I told Siri I was in a coma. This time I'm not crying. I've become numb to the pain. Time doesn't heal wounds on the heart. They just fill with scar tissue, and the pain lessens. The pain never truly leaves. Why? Monica. It was the only option I'd left. The only way I knew I could bring you to me. This is why Yuri wanted to drop out. Whenever she goes to school, everyone will know what she's been hiding. Everyone will see as the girl who cuts herself for pleasure. My mind races. My heart beats out of my chest. I can feel my own blood flowing rapidly throughout my body. My eyes beginning to flutter to every single inch of these colorless halls. I whisper to myself, I'm Yuri. Even after all this, I still can't let her go. Look at Monica. 
every cell in my body wants to beat her to the ground. I ball up my fist. All I need is for my nervous system to send the signal to my hand to send it flying through the air. Stand still. Instead, I use my last reserve of energy to make a break to the hospital doors. <sighs> oh my god, my whole body is numb. I don't know what is happening, but like literally my whole body is numb. I have like literally this coursing numb feeling throughout my whole body. I don't know. It feels so weird. Oh my god, dude. Jesus. Okay, well, we're gonna end the episode here. Alright, we're back. Uh, I couldn't end it there. There's, there's just no way I could end it there. So, um... I found a little bit more time. Let's jump right back into it, okay? Instead, I used the last reserve of my energy to make a break through the hospital doors. He carry me as I trudge through the icy rain to Yuri's house. I throw myself against the front door and reach the knob. Locked. I don't bother knocking. I clumsily lift up the doormat and find the spare key. After numerous attempts with shaky hands, I finally stick the key in. Once I hear the bolts turn, I throw the door open. Pan my eyes frantically throughout the downstairs of Yuri's house. It's barren. I search everywhere, but there's no signs of Yuri. He had to have left some sort of trace. I begin opening all her drawers and cabinets. On opening one drawer, I find something that looks familiar. I take the cylindrical object and it makes a rattling sound as I lift it up. In my hands is a bottle of pills. A full bottle of pills. Feels that Yuri's supposed to be taking to suppress her urge to cut herself. I read the label. Each bottle contains exactly 60 pills. I rip open the cap and pour the pills out on the table. They scatter and I use my hands to count them into a pile. Sliding each pill one by one, I begin counting. 1, 2, 3, 9, 18, 25, 36, 49, 57, 58, 59. And with my last index finger, I slide the last pill to the others. 60. I stare blankly at the pile of medicine, unable to focus my thoughts. For a second, I even began to forget where I was. Ugh. I'm interrupted by a single raindrop hitting the counter and making a small splash, followed by another one and another. I look up. To my surprise, a wet spot on the ceiling has appeared and is leaking. First I assumed it was the rain, but then I remember I'm on the first floor. An imaginary blueprint of Yuri's house begins to form in my head. If I'm in the kitchen, then directly above me should be Yuri's bathroom. I rush upstairs at the ungodly speed. I crash through the bedroom doors. Immediately my eyes begin to look around for any signs of Yuri. Alas, no one here, except beside the bed is an unopened box. My stomach churns as I slowly creep towards it. It's Yuri's knife collection. We never threw it out. As I walk up to it, I notice a small, empty spot where a blade once laid. There's something else I notice sound of water. Not the melodic orchestra of raindrops on a roof. The running water of a faucet. Crane my neck towards the sound. It's coming from the bathroom. I reach up and tightly grip the handle. Locked. I have no intention of knocking. I step back and prepare myself. I run at full speed at the door. My shoulder connects to the wood and I'm bounced back again. I plant my feet firmly, another sprint towards the door. Again I hit the door, I'm bounced back onto the floor. My shoulder aches in pain. I get up and plant my feet again, third time's the charm. I run at full speed. I hurl my body against the wood, it gives in, but it doesn't open. Once again I'm on the floor. The door busted off its hinges, my body's crying in pain. I use my good arm to push myself up. After collecting myself, I replant my feet, again. I summon every bit of strength I have left. My shoulder crashes into the door one last time. It breaks open. I lay on the floor, my energy zapped. I no longer move my arm. You have dislocated it. I'm screaming in agony. Ugh. 
I try to move, but I'm in too much pain. <coughs> I also notice I'm wet. Sweat? No, not sweat, but water. I should become covered in water from the faucet. I try to collect myself as much as I can. With my good arm, I steady myself and look up. Yeah. What the hell? No. I shout this, but my voice, my voice barely comes out. No, no, no! I sprawl towards the tub, Yuri lays in a red tinted water filled tub. Ugh. Hunch over the toilet and throw up. However, my stomach is empty and my abdomen just cramps and tightens. Vision begins to flourish. Tears fill my eyes. I watch as they crash and join the Scarlet River on the tile floor. Can't say I can think properly. I lift myself up. There's no pain as the adrenaline courses through my body. Y Yuri? Yuri. I grab her chin and tilt her face towards mine. Yuri? I shout in denial over her still body. Her fair skin is now turned pure white. Her purple hair now tinted from red from the pool. I lift her arm from out of the water. I show new lines, each going perpendicular to the ones of the past. Her motionless face stares into nothingness. I sit on the blood-stained floor and stare at her. Tears continue to flow down my face. The only thing I can do is stare into her lavender eyes for the first time. They fail to pierce back in them. Let's read it. This isn't real. The pain inside me, the things that I see. This isn't real. I still think maybe there's a chance. Maybe if I take a second glance. This isn't real. My mind is just playing a trick. The reality I chose not to pick. This isn't real. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. I shouldn't believe it. It's just lies. It's not real. What isn't real can't hurt me. So why do I hurt? This isn't real. 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 Because it can't be real. And that is where we will end the episode for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And um, hopefully we can all recover from this together in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Have a damn good one.